Welcome to this video. This is a second video in this series looking at the indefinite integral. You have the derivative, you want to know who it is the derivative of. In the previous video, we went through a bunch of derivatives, you know, just to review our memory of, of what functions, uh, what basic functions and what their derivatives are. And then we went through uh, just a few examples. And the main key uh, that I want to make sure we use in this video is the reverse power rule. If you have x to the n as your derivative, then the function that, that has that as this derivative must be x to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. So in this video, we're going to have two examples. In this first example, we have the derivative, and we want to find out what the function is. And our derivative is the root of x plus x squared minus 1 over x squared. And we're just going to use the power rule in reverse. Okay, so let's represent these all in terms of powers. Maybe they're integer, maybe they're not. It's okay. So we have x to the 1 half, we have x squared, and then we have x to the negative 2. The power rule works for all of these. The one exponent the power rule doesn't work for is x to the negative 1. But that's okay. We don't have that. So let's work this rule. Let's add 1 to the exponent and divide by exactly the same thing. And we'll have our function. So half plus 1, that's 3 halves. We have to divide by 3 halves. Uh, 2 plus 1, that's 3. x cubed over 3. Negative 2 plus 1, negative 1. So x to the negative 1 over negative 1. Negatives everywhere. There's a negative in front of that, but you'll be fine. And as always, remember, please, plus c on the end. You did it. Wow, that's not that bad at all. Let's add a layer to the question. Let's add a layer where we want to, given a condition, what this is is a family of curves. You know, if I have a, a, a function and I put plus C, I can shift that function up or down. But if we wanted this, this is like, a, this is called actually a general solution to the problem. But if we want a particular solution to the problem, we need a value for C. And we can get that value by being given a point that the curve goes through. Okay, uh, simplifying this, you don't divide by three halves, you multiply by two thirds, and then all those negatives, we can make that plus and go back to positive exponents. This is our function f of x. This is our family of functions. Okay, with the plus c there. So we're going to be given a point that is on the function, and from there, we'll be able to get the value of c and get a particular solution. When x is 4, y happens to be 30. We want the one from this family that's, that basically will go through that point. So we plug it in. x equals 4. A place we see of x, we put a 4. And we set that equal to 30 because when we plug in 4, we should get a 30. All right, a little bit of arithmetic here. Not that bad. 4 to the 3 halves. Square root first. Square root of 4 is 2. And then we cube it. So that's an 8 in disguise. So the first term is 16 over 3. Second term is 64 over 3. And then we have a fourth. And then plus c should be equal to 30. Let's find out what 30 is. 80 over 3. Okay. Subtract that over to the other side. 1 over 4. Subtract that over to the other side. We'll have c all by itself. Okay. Common denominator. 12. Every 1 over 12. So we'll multiply the first one that's over 1, so 360 over 12. Second one's over 3 already, so times by 4, 320 over 12. The last one's over 4, so times by 3, 3 over 12. 360 minus 320, that's 40. 40 minus 3, okay. Not the best number to deal with, but that's okay. Here we have it, 37 over 12. That's what C is. And there we go. That's our function f of x. All right, great. Let's do it for a second derivative. So cubic second derivative, then the function is going to be, um, has to go through the point when x is 0, y is 2, but when also x is 1, y is 0. OK. So if you have a cubic as your second derivative, then you must be linear. Uh, I'm sorry, you must be fifth degree. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So uh, let's take a look at that. We'll go x to the fourth over four, x cubed over three, x squared over two, plus the five x plus c. Using the power rule in reverse. Canceling the threes and the fours and the twos. 
here's what we have. When we write this though, it's not f of x, it's f prime of x. You see, we started with the second derivative and now we have the first derivative. And so we need to do it again to get down to the function. So we keep that c in there and we're going to do it again. x to the fifth over five, x to the four over four, x to the three over three, x to the two over two. The c now gets an x and we need another constant. Let's use D. Don't use C again. It might be different. All right, great. It was X to the 5 over 5, but there was already a 2 down there. So that's how it became X to the 5 over 10. All right, now we have two points that this function goes through. Generally, in these types of problems, you'll have a derivative value and a function value. But in this question, we have two function values. Let's plug them in. So we plug a 0 in. We should get a 2 out. In a polynomial, when you plug a zero in, what you get out is the constant term. So D must be two. So let's put that in. And let's plug a one in. Now we have some fraction arithmetic. It's kind of nasty. One tenth and one fourth minus two thirds plus a five halves. Okay. Common denominator, 60. Everyone over 60. 6 on the top and bottom of the first one, 15 on top and bottom of the second one, 20 on top and bottom of the third one, 30 on top and bottom of the fourth one there, plus the C should be equal to, um, oh, plus the 2. Yeah, we got the 2 in there too as well. Okay. Put that all together. Ends up as 251 over 60. Move it to the other side. C equals that fraction, negative 251 over 60. We have the D already. It's 2. That's our second, that, given that second derivative, that's the function who will not only have that second derivative, but will go through those two points. All right, great. Uh, let's stop the video here so it doesn't get too long. Uh, thank you for watching these two examples where you're given a derivative and you have to find the function. And when you're given a second derivative and you have to find the function. These uh, later will recast these problems in a different light and uh, call these um, differential equations questions or integral um, indefinite integral questions. All right, we'll come back with the um, application example and then we'll actually talk about the indefinite integral. Thank you for watching. My name is Nakai Rimmer. I'm here to help you through this calculus journey. Uh, please comment down below, like and subscribe, uh, reach out if you have any questions, find your way to my website for workbooks and videos. All right, and I'll see you in the next video.